down the street and I saw David Hammonds and he doesn't talk long but he said yeah. he said uh, he said what makes an artist you know what what makes an artist he said who can define what how to become an artist you know and he was like there's no answer to that mm -hmm. he's that's what, exactly what you said there's no answer to that and, and he goes on keeps <laughs> on walking I don't know if you can necessarily articulate it but like what kinds of things you know, make you feel compelled to take the picture, so to speak? Well, photography was a way of surviving for me. I mean, emotionally, I would take the camera and just photograph. And uh, I think, well, like my Angelou said, you know, we're here to not just survive, but to thrive. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's what it's become. Particularly when you started talking about black people and visuality and stuff, you know, like Cornel West, he talked a lot about, I remember reading this interview with him, like this is like years ago, like 30 years ago, he did this interview. And I remember like, it blew my mind just in general because Cornell, you know, so smart, he was talking about just different things. And at some point, he was talking about music mostly. And at some point, the interviewer asked him, um, well, what about visual culture? And his first response it was like, he said, well, I don't think it's that apparent, you know? That's funny because I just want to say this. Mm -hmm. We talked about that in the very first conversation. Oh, did we? That was the main thing. And I'm like, you're the only person because, you know, I don't like to say names and things, but that really understood that. And that's right. what, why I kept on talking to you, right. because you were talking about, what was the word you called, visual, cultural? Mm -hmm. And you said that, that we you know we were like remedial or yeah. something <laughs> uh, in, in, in our, our, our visuals, yeah. you know, because like- I mean, people, the, the people didn't want to hear that. They didn't want right. to hear that. But I did feel like Cornell, what he was pointing to was like relatively, like relatively mm -hmm. speaking, a kind of underdevelopment in terms of black visuality. That's exactly what you were saying. Yeah, That's but the it was the first true. time I ever heard anyone say that. Um, yeah, because we don't want to say it. We don't want to say it because it's embarrassing to us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think he didn't just say it. He also said, he said, I think, and because they, they asked him why, they said, why do you think that is? And he said, I think it's because you know, uh, the church. He mm -hmm. said, because in the church, the church was a space that subsidized black creativity, whether it be oratorical stuff, mm -hmm. you know, language, mm -hmm. music, all those mm -hmm. things found a place in the church. But even the visual the dance, thing, even a little bit of dance. Even. Yeah, That's even dance, yeah. no, totally, completely, mm -hmm. even dance. Mm -hmm. But the visual thing didn't find a place in the church. And he, you know, and he very astutely pointed out that it was completely bound up with the fact that black churches were Protestant churches. So the Protestant churches, of course, always had this very complicated relationship to visuality, idolatry, all this kind of stuff. Was well, like, say, for example, I grew up in the Catholic church, mm -hmm. and the whole thing is totally different in the Catholic church around the question of visuality slash idolatry. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, like, I, I always thought, like, it was not an accident then, like, if you take somebody like Basquiat, who, to me, in terms of the mainstream art thing, like the mainstream art thing, he definitely represented in a kind of, again, a tipping point. Like he actually broke through to something. And I thought, like, it's no accident that his parents are, you know, Haitian and Puerto Rican. That, like, like that seemed mm -hmm. to me, because uh, you can go to Haiti mm -hmm. and you see like as rich a tradition visually in Haiti, the flags and all these kinds of things as we have musically, but black Americans just didn't have the visual thing with the same diversity and complexity as we do with our oratorical thing, with our musical thing, and with our dance thing, which are way, way more developed and richer, you know. What could be revolutionary is the idea that a black artist could be just as mediocre as white artists can be and still be successful. So that's something to be said about that. Mm -hmm. Like we shouldn't have to be Michael Jordan just to get in the game. You shouldn't have to be like Boss Guy, like a once, you know, you know, a, somebody like a Boss Guy really is going to only come along once every hundred years. It's just 
we can't be expected. That can't be the level at which we enter into the game. Like, you got to be that high. My grandfather was a postman, which was one of the few jobs that you could do as a black uh, man in those times. And, but he would have another job where he painted houses. And so he used to take me to see the houses and said, see the color house and see the trim. You know, it was this mm -hmm. long house. And, and so I became aware of the flowers in the, in the garden mm -hmm. or my green beans. And so visually you, st you start looking and seeing mm -hmm. and being a quiet person, not really communicating. These are things I took in more so than any visual. Mm -hmm. So like with love is the message very clearly, that sort of came about just because we reached some sort of a critical a tipping point, I would say, about maybe four or five years ago. There was this point where between the internet, between people having cameras on their phones, and uh, black people being murdered, all of a sudden just seemed like, in Facebook, like there was this wave of, it seemed like every week a video was coming out mm. of police abusing black people. Um, and as I'm apt to do, I just collect things. You know, I'm a bit of a collector in that way. So I was very, uh, just throwing things into a file, you know, to look at them. Because I guess, you know, it's really strange. A lot of it just has to do with I'm attracted to things that disturb me. I mean, that disturbed me. I kind of, uh, I've kind of taught myself to do something that I think is a little counterintuitive. I think for most people, if something disturbs them, they recoil, they pull back. And over the years, I've sort of trained myself to do the opposite of that, which if something disturbs me, I push into it. I mean, I don't recall, I push into it. If black people were on a boat, and that boat was sinking, and they saw a, you know, an island, and they're gonna be you know, like marooned on this island, and they can only say one thing, like, like the Mona Lisa or Frankie Beverly and you know, Frankie Beverly and May's album, mm -hmm. like the Mona Lisa is done for. <laughs> no black people are gonna throw that shit in the ocean and save the record, you know, like every time. Well, let's take the music. There was a, 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 a purpose to do, like when you were working on the railroad tracks mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. you're picking cotton, you started singing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And music, for me, I mean, when I photograph, I, I need music, It's mm -hmm. but it's a way of, you know, you were, they were always doing it to mm -hmm. survive, to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's richer in that more people did it. Mm -hmm. I mean, when in the cotton fields, you weren't, you didn't have time to go draw or make things. Yeah. You had to just keep on, but mm -hmm. that music helped with the pain of it all. Mm -hmm. For example, having grown up in the South, like mm -hmm. for me, there was always these people who had these yards. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just call them like, you know, like a yard thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you'd have a yard and they'd have all these essentially sculptures. It'd generally be junk, mm -hmm. but it would be organized. Right. And like, I, I remember seeing that everywhere when I was growing up. You know, when I got to Howard and I started actually consciously looking at, I mean, the first time I saw like Rauschenbergs and Sim Lodges and stuff, I was just like, this is like straight up the kind of stuff mm -hmm. that you would see in people's yards, mm -hmm. like straight up, this is what it is. But it's kind of like this whole question of, again, like material expressivity requires a home in a way. It's mm -hmm. like, where's music you can carry it on your nervous system. If you hear somebody sing a song, mm -hmm. it just goes into your head, mm -hmm. you know? But like a drawing, a picture of something, it's got this material dimension, it means, you know what I mean? You have to have somewhere to save it. So I think that's one of the things that, uh, that I think constantly is like, has had a real impact on us in every space, you know? I've just photographed my world and all these great artists and thinkers and dancers, they will be recorded and I, that's part of my legacy and it, it is aspiring other artists and the um, younger, you know, people to come after us. If you talk about legacy, I think it's, about, it's continuity is what legacy is. Mm -hmm. It just means you understand what you do in relationship to something else, either that preceded you or that's following you. Now, how does gender figure into your work?
do. I mean, I never th really thought, even with Kamangi, someone asked me once, uh, well, how did it feel to be the first woman in Kamangi? And I mean, I said this without thinking about it, but I was like, I didn't even realize I was a woman. You know, I mean, I mm -hmm. didn't, that didn't ever come until like last, you know, right. in the last five years. I never even really thought about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think she's the best because she's a woman. I think Ming is the best because she's the best. Oh! 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 Oh!